the LFSR that we have seen previously has been realized on controller canonical form. It is also possible to realize the LFSR in observer canonical form. Again, we will have the sequence S of D, which will equal the polynomial P of D divided by the connection polynomial C of D. The difference here is how we denote the taps in the connection polynomial. So here where we have C0 equals 1, this C0 will be close to the output of the LFSR, while CL will be close to the input to the LFSR. And if you remember, this is the opposite direction as we had for the controller canonical form that we looked at before. And also, instead of having only one feedback, we now have potential feedback to the input of every D element that we have in our LFSR. And if we have this feedback or not, this will be determined by our coefficients here, C1 up to CL. An important thing that we can note here is that if we write our polynomial P of D as P0 plus P1D plus P2D squared plus and so on up to P L minus 1 D to the L minus 1. Then the coefficients here, p0 up to pl minus 1, will directly determine our starting state of this LFSR. So here we have p0 for the starting state, p1 up to pl minus 1. So different from the controller canonical form, here we can from the polynomial p of d immediately see the starting state of our shift register. So as an example, if you want to generate the sequence S that has the D transform S of D, which equals one plus D squared divided by one plus D plus D cubed, then we can use the circuit, which is an LFSR in observer canonical form here, where the C zero here equals one corresponds to this one here the c1 here which equals 1 corresponds to the coefficients for this d here in the connection polynomial and the feedback here c3 equals 1 will correspond to the coefficient that we have for the d cube in our connection polynomial and also for our starting state the one that we have here directly corresponds to the one we have here in our p of d polynomial the zero that we have here is the zero coefficient that we have in front of the d term in our p of d polynomial which doesn't exist and the one we have here it's the coefficient one that we have here in front of our d squared term in our polynomial p of d so here we can immediately if we are given this form for our sequence we can write our corresponding LFSR and the starting state in observer canonical form. So let us continue this example by determining our state transition graph by just looking at what are the state transitions that we have for this LFSR. So we have our LFSR with a starting state. What will happen in the next state is that this one that we have here, this will go back to this position, so we get a 1 here. The one that we have here will go to the middle position, so we have a 1 here. And what will come into our leftmost shift register bit is the sum of this and this bit, so here we will have again a 1. And for our next state, the leftmost 1 will go to the rightmost position, the rightmost position will go to the middle position and then we have the sum of the two leftmost positions to be the new leftmost position. And this continues for the next stage. We'll have a zero here, we'll have a one here and we will have a one here. Next we will have a one here, a zero here, a zero here. Then we have a zero here, a one here and a zero here. And then we will have a zero, a zero and a one. And then we will have a 1, a 0, and 
a one. And now we can see that we are back in our starting position. So we have covered here in total seven different states. And the eighth state that we can have is the all zero states. We will also have the all zero state in our state transition graph. And now we will compare this with what happens when we do our serious expansion. So if we take P of D divided by C of D, we see what happens. We take one in one, we can do one time. So if we multiply one by the denominator here, we have one plus D plus D cube. If we sum this up, we will get D plus D squared plus D cube. And then one in D, we can do D times. So we get here D plus D squared plus D to the four. If we sum this up, we will get D cube plus D to the four. Then we will have D cube up here and multiplying d cube into the denominator we get d cube plus d to the 4 plus d to the 6 then we have d6 here and we get d6 here and we multiply with d6 so we get here d to the 6 plus d to the 7 plus d to 9. Summing these will give us d to the 7 plus d to the 9. And now let us write our sequences a little bit differently here. So we will first start with the initial state of the shift register and we write this as 1 plus d squared. So this is just our polynomial p of d. The next state will be represented here by 1 plus d plus d squared. The next state we can here represent as d plus d squared. The next one we can represent as 1 plus d. Next one we can represent as d squared. The next one as d. And then the next one as 1. And then we have 1 plus d squared again, which is again our starting state, which is our polynomial p of d. And let us now compare this to the remainder that we had in our division. So the first remainder that we had here, we can also write as d times 1 plus d plus d squared. The next remainder here, we can write as d squared d plus d squared. But we can also write it as d cubed 1 plus d. The next remainder, d to the 6, we can write as d4 times d2. We can also write it as d5 times d. But we can also write this as d6 times 1. And the last remainder we have here, we can, if you want, write this as d7 times 1 plus d squared. So what can we say from this? Well, if we look at the d transform here of our internal state after one time unit, then this will be 1 plus d plus d squared. And this is exactly also what we have here if we delay the remainder by one time unit and the next d transform of the internal state d plus d squared will also be exactly what we have here in the remainder our next d transform here one plus d will also be what we have in the remainder here if we delay or break out d cube from our remainder and d squared that we have here can also be seen here if we break out d to the 4 from our remainder and similar for our d transform of the internal state d here and 
one here, we can find them also here in the remainder. And then finally, we are back to the state 1 plus d squared, but seven time units later, which we also can see here in the remainder if we break out the term d to the 7. So when we have this observer canonical form, our state will directly correspond to the remainder when we do our division, or when we do our series expansion here, when we take p of d divided by c of d.